Hello and welcome to Essex by the Sea. I am Owen Ward, exploring the Essex coast, finding out about the amazing and interesting stories it has to offer. Don't forget, we're across social media. You can find us on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook and Twitter and also on YouTube as well. Wherever you're listening, thanks very much for doing so and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Now for this episode, we're finding out about historic sailing barges, the traditional red-sailed barges that uh, are often seen off the Essex coast. And they take part in a series of races throughout the year. One of them is the Blackwater Sailing Match, and uh, Callie Stubbs is one of the volunteer organisers who's involved and joins me now. Thanks very much for joining me on Essex by the Sea. Hello there. Callie, first of all, just describe in, in perhaps a bit more detail, if you will, what these traditional barges are and what they look like. They're about, um, well, as you say, most people have seen them on the water. They're probably about 90 foot long, generally. They were built to transport goods around the East Coast. So companies owned them. They were company barges and it was, um, they were commercial sailing boats, basically, that worked on the River Thames and transported on the estuary the, uh, all the goods, the hay, straw, bricks, all sorts of stuff. Um generally built out of wood but obviously later on they they realized that building them out of steel was quite a good thing as well and yeah they were they were essentially raced then for a while because the barge owners wanted to show how good they were how good their company barges were and how fast they were i guess actually the racing then did have an important part (laughs) of sort of selling their form of transport to to transport the goods from a to b I don't know where A to B would have been, but off the Essex coast. And then it generated, so it generated interest, more interested in the barges and, and, and the racing. So they then developed the barges a bit more and they became faster and they had new gear on them, new spars, new sails, new ideas. So they would go faster because the races were highly competitive, still are, so... In terms then of these very historic boats, I mean, how many are still in existence? I presume back in the day there would have been lots of them uh, doing oh, the trade. Uh, yeah. How many are still around now? Um, racing, the, the, the maximum we would hope to get for a race is probably about 12, 12 to 15. Um, there are about 20 to 30 around some in states of various repair. Actually, sailing, I would say there's probably about 15 to 20, which is, you know, tiny amount compared to how many would have been on the river. Um, But a lot of them are coming up to and are already about 100 years old. So just keeping them going is fairly amazing, really. Quite a lot of work, especially, you know, wood in water is probably not a, a great mix. And so uh, the sort of constant <laughs> repair that they, they probably need. Who yeah. who owns them these days then? If it's not these companies, I mean, is it organisations? Is it individuals that are lucky enough to own them? Well, there's Thames, there's Thames Barge Trusts. There's trusts uh, like the Cambria Trust who have got um, money from the lottery to rebuild the barges. There's sail training trusts like Sea Change who have got Blue Mermaid who take out disadvantaged youngsters and people that wouldn't even, children that wouldn't even see the sea or be near the coast. It's an amazing opportunity and, and, you know, it really changes things for them. Obviously, some of them are privately owned. Uh, You've got to have a fair bit of money if you're going to, say, you know, get into barges and say goodbye to all of your savings really <laughs> <laughs> i guess they do uh, take up a yeah. lot of money don't they to to keep in the state but i mean what a sight it is i mean i was down in Morden only a few weeks ago and and saw one of the uh, one of the vessels sailing along the river um it wasn't obviously in full sail because it was just just leaving the river blackwater that well sailing up past uh, Morden so obviously very narrow um i think yeah. it had a motor on it <laughs> the yeah. way it was the way it was being uh, steered and and uh, the way the wind was blown but I mean they're just fantastic to to see and clearly you're very passionate about these uh, barges and being involved where where did that passion come from how did you end up being involved I think it's everyone will tell you that sails on barges it's a bug and it gets you once you sail on them they're they're amazing to sail and the heritage that we've got I mean Molden for example has got a barge in the in the town sign this is Molden is an important part of the barge history there were quite a few barges built here um 
And obviously with the Heritage Harbour as well, which we're involved in, we're trying to keep things like that going and keep the skills going, the shipwrights, the um, the barge masters. You have to have a barge masters, a special barge masters ticket to be able to take out a barge. It can't just be anybody. So it's, you know, it's there's a lot of skill involved in this and a lot of traditional skills. And once you see all of that, it's so you want to maintain it, you want to preserve it. And it is part of the traditions and skills of the East Coast that are going to go if we don't keep it up. Absolutely. And and so iconic to Essex. You mentioned there about the uh, an image of the barge appearing in the sign. And there's a few of sort of village yeah. signs. And uh, in uh-huh. fact, actually, a barge features in the Essex by the Sea podcast logo. It's that iconic. You know, that- yeah, um, everybody knows them. Yeah, I, 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 I hear that you actually arrived in Malden first time on a boat. I did. I arrived on a boat. I'd been on a trip across to Holland with the Curden Sail Trust, who actually did things for, this was obviously quite sort of, quite a while ago. They're still around, do stuff for um, youth, take them out on the water. We did a trip over to Holland, came back. Um, worked our way down the east coast, came into Malden, and I thought, oh, it's quite nice here. Uh, looked at the barges, and I, well, this is something I think I could probably do. So, you know, it was literally just try, see if I can get on board. And I did. <laughs> and you got involved. I, mean, I did. You, are you there sort of hoisting the main sail or steering? I mean, I guess there's probably quite a few things you have to do on a barge to, to actually sail it. Well, actually, the way the rig is, you don't hoist the main sail, you drop oh. it. Oh, right. OK. As you look at the rig, there's a mast that sticks straight up and coming out of the mast at about a 45 degree angle is the spreet. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So as the mast carries on up, you've got the topsail, which stays attached all the time. You just unfurl it, basically, when you want to use it. And the mainsail is what they call brailed up. So it's brailed up with rope and then with a series of winches, handles and pulling, the brails come down and the mainsail effectively just drops down towards the deck. That's why it was such an efficient rig and that's why it didn't need many people to work it when they were operating under trade. Very easy then, as you say, gravity doing the work to to open the the sow then. Absolutely, yeah. So the hard hard work would be then to stop it, <laughs> presumably, and and wind wind it in. There's methods. There's the yeah. I mean, different sails on the barge do different things for steering. You'll always you'll quite often see if if a barge is going out under engine, they'll quite often have just the topsail up. That topsail is excellent for steering, and it's amazing what you can do with that. The mizzen sail is the one on the back of the barge, right at the aft end. It's only a small sail, but it's really important. So, you know, they that whoever designed these barges really thought about the rig and being able to sort of like coast up into little Thames estuary bits and which is what they had to do. And you need that manoeuvrability, don't you? Because, you yeah, know, there, there are various inlets and estuaries and rivers that are all bendy and twisty. Yeah. And, and to, so, as you rightly say, to navigate those, you're going to need the manoeuvrability of, of the craft, whatever craft that and, may and be. Le- the lee boards, which act as the keel because it's flat bottom, the lee boards actually help. So, I mean, not that you would ever pivot on a lee board or anything like that, but you can drive them to a certain extent into the mud to slow the barge down you can then you know you know it's all it's very clever actually now the lee board just explain that then what's a lee board and and what does it what's it for other than the steering as you mentioned to the side so you've got one on each side of the barge um because a barge is a very shallow draft so that it could get up into all the little mud burrs effectively the boat is very um flat bottomed so if you had a barge that was just flat bottomed in the wind, it's going to go sideways. It's not really going to go forwards because the wind is going to take it across. So the lee board gets dropped to stop you going sideways. Then obviously when you tack, that lee board comes up and the, the lee board on the other side of the boat goes down to stop it going the other way. It's, it's quite a simple procedure, really. It's just heavy. <laughs> <laughs> heavy bits of wood, I, I, I would imagine. It's all done with a series of winches. So it's all, you know, hand, nothing's mechanical on there. Keeps you fit, keeps the really old muscles does. going, doesn't it? It really does. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly know you've had a day sailing, I suspect, when you've uh, been uh, on a barge. You definitely do, yeah. <laughs> now, 2022 is the 60th year of the Blackwater 
barge sailing match. What is involved in one of these? Perhaps people have been along the coast and have seen it taking place. But but what happens in one of these racing matches? As you, as you mentioned, originally it would have been for the barges to sort of show off, hey, yeah, we got the fastest barge. But, I mean, is that still the case? Are they, are they very competitive? Well, it's all, yeah, terribly competitive. It's all so that we can win trophies. That's, we're pot hunters, essentially. <laughs> Um, it, there's no money involved. It's very sociable. There's a big waterfront community amongst the barges and the smacks. Some of the matches are just barge matches, but some of them also involve the smacks, which, again, that's part of the heritage as well of the East Coast. What's the uh, difference then, uh, Kelly, if, I, if you don't mind me yeah. jumping in, what's the difference then between a barge and a smack for those that don't know? So a smack is an uh, actual definition is an ex-working sailing fishing vessel. The biggest ones you've got were things like probably about about 60, 70 foot, but they they were up to the northern end of the Thames estuary. The the ones around here were oyster smacks. So they went out and they dredged for oysters. And then it was if you essentially if you get back quickest, you get the better price for your whatever you've got on board. Mm. And they used to, you know, herrings, all sorts of stuff like that. Um they were engineless. They still are, most of them, engineless, along with the barges as well. Some of those are still engineless. So, yeah, they were, they weren't fishing if, effectively. So the smacks are the fishing vessels. The barges it, are the ones that that carried the, the materials from A to B. Absolutely, yes. Fantastic. You take part in these races and you mentioned about the community and, and actually these these races are a chance for the community to get together. You might, you know, I'm guessing. <laughs> When you're out on a barge or any boat off the Essex coast, you, you, you're sort of quite remote, really, aren't you? You're on your little vessel or big vessel and, and doing your sailing. Um, yeah. But I guess these races give you an opportunity for everybody to come together and uh, and have a good time. Yeah, I mean, any, anyone can can charter the barge. We, we on, a, on the barge that I sail on, Ruperta, we take charters. We can take up to 10 charters for a race. Any individual or group can come. It's you can take part in the race as well. It's it's lovely when you're out there because you there's part of you that wonders whether anyone's even aware of what's going on. You know, are, are there even people in the town that know there's a river here? Some don't. I, I do firmly believe we're out there. We're racing for no particular recent reason other to enjoy ourselves and win a trophy and get together and drink a few beers and, you know, <laughs> have a gathering. It's it's lovely. It is a little family, really. Well, quite a big family, actually. But yeah. And it's and it's about keeping the heritage alive, as you said, it's as well. Absolutely. Completely about that. I'm also um, involved with the Association of Bargemen and there's the Sailing Barge Association. There's a lot of people working very hard to keep all of this going and spending a lot of money. As restoration projects, of course, do and, and, and keeping our heritage alive, it is. It, it, it's brilliant to see them um, and uh, fantastic when, when they are at sale. It sounds as though those races are uh, are, are really uh, sort of good fun and good to be yeah, part they of. Are. They really are. And, mm. and that enthusiasm is coming across in, in bucket load, Kelly. Um, I, I, time is, is almost beaten us, but uh, what's the one thing about barges and being involved with, with uh, operating these, these craft that uh, really gets you, you know, every time you sort of pinch yourself and, and, and can't quite believe that you're doing it. Is there, is there one thing that you go, this is so special? There's several things. One, that we're sailing around on a piece of history that, that people were working on 100 years ago. We're out in the water. We're so lucky. We live on an island. We're so lucky to have all of this around us. And we should be more involved in it. And we should understand what's happening with the sea. And also... We're keeping the heritage going. I mean, Molden's, Molden is a heritage harbour. Um, that's beginning to happen a lot around the East Coast. And it's really important to keep all of these skills going. And keeping the skills going keeps the barges going. And it, yes, it is a piece of history. And we're very, really, in fact, we're very lucky to be able to do it. And in the volume of, of barges that are still around, as you say, that yeah. are, you know, are 100 years old, pretty much, you know, it is fantastic the work that uh, uh, pretty much all the volunteers are doing to do that. Because yeah, it is a very much a volunteer involved. community. Yeah, there's it? a lot of volunteering, a lot of teamwork, but it's it's a lovely thing to get into. And it can be, it's not just men, it is women, as you obviously, as you can see. But um, children get involved as well. You know, we're, we're trying to get everybody involved just so that it doesn't die. 
we want to keep it going. And if people want to find out more about getting involved and yep. maybe come along for the first time, where's the best place to go? Because so there's lots of different organisations running these vessels. Yeah, there's, a, there, there's, there's an awful lot. If you do any search on Thames sailing barges, at least 10 to 12 boat names will come up and you can see that you can charter them that you can go and just do a little tide trip on them from Malden or you could go out you could get your children on board you know you could get a group together go and have a birthday party we've done we've done weeks on Ripperta where we've sailed around the east coast for somebody's 60th birthday and he had people on for two days and then you know another group of 10 joined they got off and another you know so he had his birthday with all his friends based over a week and got to see the East Coast and sail on a barge. You know, things like that are just, they're, they're lovely to do. Absolutely brilliant. And uh, thank you very much for, for joining me here on the podcast. And uh, all the best with the uh, sailing races that you're involved with for the rest of the year. Thank you very much. Thank you. Kelly Stubbs there, who volunteers to organise the Blackwater Barge and Smack matches. Thank you very much for, for joining me here on Essex by the Sea. Don't forget an episode of the podcast drops every 1st and 15th of each month. So until the next time, thanks very much for listening.